But the problem, the problem with that is that when you do a defamation lawsuit, you have to have money to pay the attorney. And I really don't think he's got the money to pay an attorney, but who knows? It doesn't matter. <laughs> is this a spurned lover? Uh, well, he might be. Good Lord, he acts like it. <laughs> Holy smokes. But uh, we have got uh, a great guest joining us today here on our big broadcast. And, of course, it, you have to know that uh, it is another grand edition of fucking around with porn stars. And we have got a great one today. Uh, the man, the myth, the legend. I, I, I don't even know how to, how, to, how to even present you, Howie. You, you were amazing, baby. You're doing great. I, I can't wait to meet this guy. <laughs> I can't wait to meet this guy. Howie Gordon with us today. One of the things that I thought was amazing was the last time we had we had him on this show, he is one of the first guests ever to send me a thank you card, and it said, you're fucking nuts. It is amazing. <laughs> I still have it. It's fantastic. And uh, <laughs> Howie joins us today here on the magic of the old skip a the the skype rooney as they say. Um so, Howie, you have been uh, terribly busy, it seems. Yes, I just had a colonoscopy yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, hey, here in a couple of years, I'll be there right with you, baby. I'll be there right oh, with you, you with, wait, with boy, all this really stuff. This. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, one of the things I love about you is that you are a fan of porn and porn people and you uh you know you had all those years in the business and you still to this day i see you every once in a while pop in on um our close personal longtime friend patrick palmer's show over there on jeez talking and uh we're just jeez talking and uh <laughs> like that. i love i love patrick he's great me too so what 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 do you, what do you think of this this new crop of porn people? Because every once in a while he has some the new crop of porn people on. I I do that every once in a while here. But uh, what 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 do you think of the new crop of uh, of of, of uh, boys and girls, as they say? Well, one of the reasons I go on the show was because after I stopped working, which was the late eighties. Yes. Um, I mean, being connected in any way, I stopped doing sex scenes in the in the mid '80s, um, and I pretty much was just done. And I, I moved on with my life and didn't have a lot to do with the industry other than to write about my time in it. I didn't keep up. I didn't watch the product. I didn't uh, know who the stars were very much. And uh, somewhere along the line, I got reconnected uh, by. By my emeritus status, people call me up and getting them, what's my opinion of this or that, and I generally had no idea because I wasn't keeping up. So, one of the things that I liked about Pat's show is that he has on all the new kids. Now, I don't even know the forms that the porn is being delivered in nowadays. Um, only fans and this oh, and that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm not and a every, everything is, uh, you know, we're, 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 we're going to get into that here a little bit later on because uh, okay. I, I've, I've got to tell you about uh, the fact that, uh, well, unfortunately, or maybe or maybe fortunately, I don't know. I, I haven't determined what it is yet. Uh, I am in the porn business, I guess. But Oh, uh, boy, what are you doing? Oh, boy! <laughs> <laughs> So so yeah, know? I'm learning all. Does your mother know? Um, you know what's funny is she does. Uh, all the uh, oh. I, all the she doesn't really understand it, but uh, the uh, you know that is the one thing that I am I am slowly but surely learning is all the different forms and formats and all these things because. Like back in the day when, when, when you were, you know, kicking ass and taking names and doing the damn thing as they say, or whatever, um, or, 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 or as my, uh, one of my buddies used to say, you know, I'm, I'm here to fit it. I'm, I'm, I'm here to fit in where I'm, I get in where I fit in. And if you're Jeeves, almost nowhere, but, uh, the, uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> the thing is, is that you were doing, uh, you were in the 80s, you know, 70s and 80s. So we're talking VHS. We're talking, you know, videos. That was, that was how it was done. That was the end of my career. The first half of my career was all film. Oh, really? All film. And then uh, 19, in the early 1980s, video uh, showed its face and very quickly took over the industry. Yes. Because porn was never anything if not cheap. Uh, <laughs> and it used to cost Still like is. 30, <laughs> 30 to $50,000 to make a cheap movie. And yeah. then they discovered they could make a cheap video for two or $3,000. Whoa, that's all they needed to hear. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, the, the, the sad part with that was that the returns were also a lot less. But yeah. there was a time. It was just, you can't stop progress. You know, the river keeps moving on. And the entire theater chain that had thrived, uh, the Pussycat Theater for one, um, went out of business. All those theaters, which, you know, in, in one sense... I always felt weird going into a movie theater to watch porn because um, I was a little too shy to pull out and jerk off there. Um, although there are plenty of people that weren't. Uh, but, you know, that to me, once it came into the home, that was a, an improvement in terms of creating a larger market. Yes. Um, yes. But it, it killed off a lot of, a lot of uh, parts of the industry that were never to return. Although some people made the transition. Well, you know, one of the things that I I I have, I'll tell you, my my life since 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 uh, January, I often tell people I don't even know what my life is at this point. But uh, you know, there is a I I have gotten into all sorts of things. I've gotten into this porn thing. We've gotten into the swinger lifestyle. I've gotten in with all these weird BDSM people. Uh, or, or, or as Bill O'Reilly would say, with all due respect, the weird BDSM people. <laughs> that's, that's how, that's how O'Reilly does it. He says, with all due respect, and then he fucking yeah. trashes people. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But course, uh, Lord knows what he does privately. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Apparently, uh, if if you if you uh, remember the Fox News. Uh, one of the Fox News lawsuits uh, that had O'Reilly involved in, and he apparently likes to refer to hot black chicks in the office as hot chocolate, oh, which uh, is, I'm plays, just amazed. By that. that plays real well this century. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> That's right. Uh, we have got the fantastic man about town. You, 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 you know him from uh, from, from the world of the, uh, as Ali G would say, the world of the porno. Uh, Howie Gordon is with us today. He is a uh, legendary porn guy. Uh, well, they're not going to know Howie Gordon. They're going to know Richard Pacheco. Richard Pacheco. That's right. Yeah, Pacheco. Pacheco. Um, Howie is my real name. And uh, for years, I tried to keep it. Oh, in my very first, one of my first films, um, I, I, the movie was Candy Goes to Hollywood. I think it was my third <laughs> film. And uh, Carol Connors was a star. It was a big-time production. And yeah. um, the poster comes out for it, and I had just been chosen to be the Playgirl um, Man of the Year. Yes, in 19, yes. In 1979. And which was a big deal. And all those playgirls said to me, "Look, no porn. We don't. Not, we're not porn." To them, that was uh, wrong. <laughs> they, they could. Yes. They were trying to be mainstream. It was over the counter. Um, X was not mainstream. It was under the counter or behind the counter. So uh, I was to not be connected to the X-rated industry. Keep that to myself. And this poster for Candy Goes to Hollywood comes out, and there is my name, Howie Gordon, on the fucking poster. Now uh, at the time. I was using the stage name of Dewey Alexander, which was a personal favorite because Dewey, came Dewey. To Huey, <laughs> like Huey, Huey, Dewey, and Louie. Huey, Dewey, and Louie. You, yes. You, you, a Jiggy would know that kind of thing. I love it. I love it. <laughs> and my Ducktales, last name was Alexander, baby. which was for Alexander the Great, a man who needed no introduction. Dewey <laughs> Alexander. Um, but no, they didn't use the name. I signed my motto release, Dewey Alexander. Well, once they heard about Playgirl, they figured they could make a few extra dollars by using my real name. So they just fucked me. 
and <laughs> that just fucked me. Well, and they put it on the poster. Well, I saw this poster and like, oh my god, my career going straight is going to go bye bye, and my parents are going to find out. Oi, <laughs> and the whole, Oy, I, would be out, <laughs> I would be outed in a way I didn't want to be outed. So I panic, and I rushed down to Los Angeles where Caribbean Films was based. In fact, all the porn in the West Coast was based in L.A. Yeah. But they couldn't shoot in L.A. because they'd get arrested. So <laughs> what they did is they'd load up their vans with equipment, all the production companies, drive up to San Francisco where the, the, the powers that be didn't give a shit. Um, if there was no harm, no foul. And, and they'd shoot up here. And then when they were done shooting, they'd go back down and edit and do their product, post-production work. So I go down into their office and I go, you use my real name in the poster. You've got to have all these posters pulled back in. And they all just start laughing at me. <laughs> it's like, um, you know, the question is, can you sue the mafia? Is that a good idea? Um, <laughs> hey, hey, look at this kid. He wants us to pull in all the posters. <laughs> that ain't going to happen, kids. That ain't going to happen. So, uh, lesson number one, oi. Um, oi. And, uh, that was, uh, I didn't just, I, I managed to keep my real name out of it after that, but luckily I suffered no real damage other than to my, my psyche. I love which it. Which has never recovered, of course. I love it. Well, one of the things that, uh, so, okay, so, so, so the Huey, Dewey, and Louie thing, how, 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 how in the world do we get Richard Pachenko? How does, how does well, that Well, that's happen? a good story, because, um. <laughs> I was I I picked you with Dewey and Louie myself. I was using a different name in every movie, and I'd made a bunch of Luke, maybe 10, 15, 20 projects. And every time I just pull a Raphael Sabatini. And I made, you know, <laughs> I just hey, sa sounds ass. like somebody who, who who plays for the for for the uh, for the Red Sox. <laughs> well, he was the soccer player for Italy. <laughs> um, That's awesome. And so at this particular time, I did a movie called Talk Dirty to Me for Anthony Spinelli. And uh, this was um, a big movie, and we didn't realize it was going to be as big as it was. But it, uh, I made this movie, and we, we finished shooting the movie, and it's a beautiful story of that whole deal. I'll, we can get into that after. Uh, but I'm signing my model release for Sam, and he says to me, look, I don't want any fucking Dewey Alexanders in my movie. Pick a new name. So I turned to his son, Mitchell Weston, uh, Mitchell Spinelli at the time, and I, he wrote the script for this movie. So I said, okay, what's my name? And he looks me up and down, and he goes, Richard Pacheco. And I said, how do you spell it? And the movie became this giant hit. So... That's how I got stuck with that name. Well, I was I was looking around on on, on the good old internet, and other names that uh, Richard Pachinko has used over the years. Uh, Dewey Ag Alexander, we, we we covered that one. Number one. Mac Howard. Short is, for is, McKinley Howard, which had been before him. <laughs> Mark Mac Howard, Howard was the son of McKinley Howard. Apparently, Mark Howard, his cousin. Well, Mark was my middle name, Howard. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> that he had a turn, too. Uh, Norman Vade, which is awesome. I didn't come up with that one. I don't know who did. Okay. But, but it was fine with me. And then McKinley Howard, so. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I, I love it. I, I just, uh, I, I love having you on. I love talking about all this stuff. And uh, the fantastic... Richard Pachenko, a.k.a. Howie Gordon, joins us. What, what, no, you keep, what, you keep, you keep sticking an N in, pa, in Pachenko. There's no N in there. There's, it's just, pa it's just Pachenko. I put no. the N in. No Arr, N. Got to take no the N. N out of there, baby. Pache, Che, Che, not Chenk. Pachenko. <laughs> <Pa -chenko. laughs> I love you, baby. A, so, so name. I want to I do it right. So one of the things that I have noticed with all these new porn people just over the years you know going to these conventions these exoticas and all this stuff which by the way at some stage of the game patrick needs to get you to an exotica 
Well, I, I used to. Uh, you need to go to Chicago day. Exotica or one of these Exoticas. We, we, I, I, I would like love that. to interview you in one of my Christmas suits at the fucking Exotic. All right, well, we'll make that happen. Um, years ago, when my, my book first, I wrote a book called Hindsight, True Love and Mischief in the Golden Age of Porn. And I published that in 2013. And then I was looking for opportunities to try to fucking sell the book. Yeah. Um, so I would go to wherever I would be wanted. And there's a number of, I would there were a number of events like Exotica. So I don't know they called them back, back then. Or there's autographs. And there's oh, yeah. Things, uh, yeah. Straight Hollywood's in the big ballroom and the porn's in the back room. Um, yeah. They would do these shows together. And I would go down there and uh, sign the books then. Uh, it was underwhelming in terms of helping me to sell any books. Well, it yeah. It was kind of fun. And I got to see a lot of my old friends. That was good. Uh, but I didn't get it. I ended up spending more money to go there than I've been made. And that's that's what I... That is that is not an uncommon thread that I hear through various people who go to these conventions. Is yeah. You're spending a lot more cash than you're making. Well, the megastars of the era of the time... Uh, Jenna Jameson, because that's that was she was a big shot when I was uh, went down there, and so yep. she made money because oh yeah, were, oh her yeah, lines were long, and she's selling her merchandise and um, whatever else she was selling, and uh, so for those kind of people, they make out, but for the fringe people or the old guard or the hall of famers, uh, unless you get really super famous for something, you're not going to make money. Yeah, well, a lot of a lot of them. Like uh, Evan Stone and some of these guys, I think he's big enough. He's big they're enough. they're getting things, I think, comped. I think maybe they're getting their hotels paid for as long as they fly themselves there, or I think maybe they're getting their their flights taken care of if they pay for their hotel room. There's 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 little things that they're doing to try to, yeah. because like a few years ago. When we went to uh, one of the ABNs in Vegas, uh, we hung out with this chick named Annabelle Peaks, who at the time was kind of, she was like a big freaking deal. She okay. got in, made her money, and got the hell out of there. Uh, <laughs> one of the things that she said was this booth that she was appearing at, they paid for a hotel room. And that was all she had to do was figure out a way to get there. But she said that some of that stuff, wow, it's craziness. But I'll tell you, the thing that these chicks have learned, which this has got to be an OnlyFans thing. This has got to be, this has got to be something that is just a new phenomenon. But like, for instance, with Annabelle, at one point I had mentioned to her, hey, you know, we're all going to be in the same area. Hey, why don't we get together and have, have dinner or something? And she's like, well, only if my assistant can come. And I said, okay, I don't give a shit. Hell, I'm going to let my girlfriend come. Hell, the assistant can come. I don't care. So, <laughs> but one thing that she was doing was she had to schedule me in. Because she had someone who already had bought her dinner. They'd bought her breakfast. They'd bought her lunch. She was doing this thing where she was having these guys get on her website. And they would bid. Uh, yeah, time, time with the with the with the star. Amazing, and she's like, "I'll pay for their dinner," but she goes, "They want to be a gentleman," and so she goes, "What we do is we go out to wherever they're going to, you know, take me for for dinner, and she meets, you know, whoever it is, and then her assistant sits in." The uh, restaurant somewhere just is kind of like security, I guess. Uh huh. Yeah. And and I thought, well, this is quite the little racket. <laughs> yeah. You remind me very much of uh, in my day. Uh, John Leslie was, of course, the, the one of the alpha males, and uh, we were in about ten movies together. Yeah. Well, he in one of the movies, I think it was talked dirty to me. In fact. Um, we used his sports car uh, in the scene. So <laughs> he managed to charge the production for four new tires for his car. 
and this is how he made a little extra money on the side. Because there's always money on the side. For oh, yeah. Things that come up. So yeah. he would hit the production. That, you know, I need new tires. And, you know, be nice as a production bottom for me. And you, you, you got to keep your star happy. So there's a there's a guy um, who used to uh, he was a he was a wrestling manager in world championship wrestling back in the day. His name was Paul Heyman. He is uh, he uh, he was Paulie dangerously at that time. But what he would do is he would get the tickets, the plane tickets, and then he would turn them in <laughs> and then he would buy a cheaper fare. <laughs> And that's how he was making. Yeah. And and because WCW was owned by Turner, it was such a big corporate conglomerate that never ever really figured out what he was doing. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody's always got an angle. That's right. There's always an angle. So, Richard, what what are you noticing with you know being around and and seeing some of these newer. Girls and guys, are are you are, are are you seeing comparisons to the people you worked with back in the day, or, or how is? Well, I saw that in the last generation. Yeah. This new generation are more like my grandchildren uh, <laughs> than my children. So I, um, I go on Patrick's show because I it's a way for me in my emeritus capacity to because I do a lot of podcasts and stuff. So oh I don't yeah. Want to be totally ignorant about what's going on but i don't i don't use porn um if you're ever i mean and you make porn and you do that it's kind of like you can't you don't jerk off to it anymore it's it's like once you see behind the curtain with what the wizard's doing the magic's gone so it became something that i did a lot before i got in the business and after i got in the business it stopped being something that was attractive to me that i cared about and after i quit the business Boy, did I not care about the business. <laughs> yeah, boy, did I not care about the business. <laughs> I didn't care who was the latest, you know, Seika or Annette Hayes. Oh, yeah. Or, I just didn't keep up. Um, and then now it's changed. So we made movies, and at some point, it's, movies went away. Uh, and now it's all yeah, other stuff. Porn has, st- you know what, what you, that is that is so interesting that, that you, you, you bring that up, my man, because... I, it, it's kind of like music, you know, back in the day it was, you'd have albums and you'd have, you know, 12 songs and that's what it was. And then, then it got into where we, well, we've got the 12 albums, but we're going to release a single and that's what we're going to push on the radio. And then it became, uh, all the Napster stuff and, and, and all this pirating what? of music <laughs> and then it then it became this thing of we lost you mr jiggy oh you are you still, still here are you, i can't hear you are you are can you hear me are you are you back what 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 happened here oh the internet died well that of course is always something that happens so can you hear me at all i'm here you're not here you're not yeah, here but where here is I don't know where here is. This uh, is this is amazing. This is amazing. The 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 internet will eventually correct itself. They put robots on the moon. I'm I'm gonna. That's exciting. Where are you? Where are you? Hello. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Hello there. uh, Hello there. Ah. Talking. Uh, We're gonna. Ah, there you are. There we are. We're back. We're back. The the internet corrected itself. You were happy there for a while. That was good. I like. Nope. Now you're not happy anymore. I just okay. I I just let you do you're your going, thing. I just let you, you do go. your thing. You're sort of there. Your picture's there. I'm sort of there. And well, free, I've been saying free, that for oh, a you're few back years. Your you're back. Boy, this is technological herpes. Te- <laughs> <laughs> technological herpes. <laughs> like the colonoscopy. The shit keeps coming out. Wow. <laughs> Okay, I think oh, the no. internet has corrected I'm not itself. Hearing you at all. There's You're no not sound. hearing me at all. I see your picture. You can, can see the picture. We can each other and make We can things. do this. We can do all that. Yes, <laughs> that whole thing. Sign language on the radio. But, uh, this is great. I, I, I will write things down and present them. Zen, Zen radio. And well, <laughs> Imagine you're hearing things. We'll, we'll, we'll do we this. We'll volume back. Well, well, uh, we'll, 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 we'll write sure things yeah. down and then we'll hold them up and then all that stuff. I can't. I, you it didn't. I couldn't read it. It was just white. Okay. Can you hear me now? 
Um, am I am muted? I back? Are you muted? Let's see. I don't know what don't happened. Anything that says mute anywhere. Because if so you've got me, I'm mute. Okay, so you should. Because the internet you should can hear be me, fine. Shake your head. I've I've got can you. Hear you. Me? Yes. Yeah, I cannot hear you. You oh, can't. I heard a yes. You heard a yes. I'm, you're back on. Okay, we're back. We're back, baby. Wow, yeah. what the Look fuck the... is happening? I think it was the internet on my end. Oh, I think it was the ghost of John Leslie. He didn't like <laughs> ghost of, of John Leslie's getting everybody. <laughs> he didn't but, want me to tell us. What, what, oh, he stole money from the production. What, but <laughs> well, what I was saying was, you know, it used to be albums and it became singles. Then music piracy led to people just buying songs. Right. And it used to be porn. It used to be porn movies, and then yeah. it became. Now it's just these clips. You know, yeah. you spend, Scenes. you know, ten bucks and you get a five-minute blowjob video, and yes. it, that's all this stuff is now. Well, for a lot of people, that's <laughs> all they want. Uh, the, the number of people that really wanted um, story. Uh, and Porty May drama, <laughs> comparatively <laughs> speaking, was was small compared to the people who just wanted to jerk off and come. Um, but it, it gave porn more of a legitimacy to not be persecuted by the authorities. Yes. To, to attempt to have some socially redeeming value, which was born in the 50s about written porn, uh, that term, socially redeeming value. Uh, so Social it doesn't surprise values. me that people have reduced it just to the essentials. And uh, that's what they charge for. And the kids today, uh, I mean, they give awards in porn now that have nothing to do with performance, sex, uh, theatrical performance. They're all about sexual performance. Yes. Uh, yes. Largest tits and, uh, in, 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 you know, post milk and... In fact, <laughs> let me let me do this. Let's let let's let's find it here. The uh, the AVNs, which is the Standard, I guess, for the uh, yeah. for the for the business, as they say. They uh, have four categories. They have uh, best actor, best actress, best supporting okay. actor, best supporting actress. And they make three movies a year, so the competitions, you know. Male people. performer, female performer, male foreign performer, transgender performer. Best new starlet, best director, best non-sex performance, best all-sex video. Uh, then you get into all this other stuff. Best cinematography, best renting title of the year, best selling title of the year. Yeah. Uh, best newcomer, uh, best bisexual video, best gay video, best actor in a gay video. Uh, then there's best gay alternative video <laughs> and then, uh, best alternative adult feature film, best sex comedy, uh, breakthrough award, whatever the hell that is. Newcomer. Uh, best DVD, unsung starlet of the year. Best Somebody high that's old that never got an award. They have Look, a best high the end all sex release. White, white, white world again. I can't hear you. I can't. Uh oh, the internet, the internet is gone. Dot, maybe like little, I don't know what's going on. Something's hello, happening. Hello, Senator Dot. How are you, Senator Dot? Best Senator Dot of the year, <laughs> ABN. We're talking about the polo I've never here. Seen the, center. Oh, you, the voice is struggling to come back. The on. voice is starting right. to come back here. Yeah, we're trying to get everybody Quick, together. Pick him up. He's not dead. Pick him up. Don't, don't, don't say words Bring over him, him. He's not dead yet. Best boy girl scene. Evacuation. But there's all sorts of Pictures. things. Here's your picture. Oh, you're, you're gone again. Oh, I'm back. I'm not here. Maybe I'm here. Maybe I'm not here. Your, I don't voice, know. your voice is good. Your picture's frozen. Well, it's radio, so we've, uh, Unable to send data fast enough. What does that even mean? I don't know what that even means. But, that means uh, that your, your, shit, your shit's fucked up. Apparently. <laughs> I need to get that business internet. That's what I need to get yeah. out here. Your voice is good. We can pretend we're on radio. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, yeah, you're right about all the award categories. There's a billion of them. Yeah. It's like Little League, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Little League. Everybody gets a trophy. Yeah, everybody gets a trophy. 
Oh, I love it. But yeah, there's there's some of this. Well, and one of the things that I find amazing about um, porn, which I, I, I don't know why this shocked me last l- this last year, but uh, one of the big companies in porn, I think it was Brazzers or one of these groups, they released a scene that was four people, and it was two women and two guys, and everybody's doing everybody. And I was just kind of shocked. I'm like, oh, the gay guys are not gay and the women are and i'm like wow and everybody's like oh that's just standard now because everybody's included and i'm like okay (laughs) (laughs) so that that kind of shocked me because i was like oh i would would get shocked at that too it used to be called an orgy but generally um it was it was heterosexually inclined as opposed to mixing gay and straight yeah so this is this is you know, something for everybody. It was all in one package. Yeah. So, uh, Caligula. what what do you, what do you think of the of the females that are in porn now, as compared to the females that you worked with when you were doing your thing? Well, I just saw this past Sunday a plus sized woman. Um, yes. When when I was in porn, in fact, the movie was Candy Goes to Hollywood. I was brand new in the business. And he goes to Hollywood. And I had done three or four sex scenes, all of which were incredibly traumatic. Uh, for me, to be able to get a heart on, there was no Viagra, no Cialis. No oh, yeah. Uh, and it was traumatic for the director, who was Bob Chin, who was waiting for me to get a heart on so he could get a sex scene. So when Candy goes to Hollywood, he once again was the director, and instead of hiring me to have a sex scene... He hired me to uh, be comic relief, and my sexual partner in, in that movie was like a 250-pound woman, and they didn't really care whether I got a hard on or not, because that was just playing for laughs. So that was the joke back 30, 40 years ago. Nowadays, <laughs> there are women who are plus-size sex objects. Oh yeah. And well, that's that, that, that's brand new to me. Um, so I. Wow. I mean, you know, no matter what it is, who was it? It was Woja Howitz on Barney Miller. <laughs> and there was a, there was a, a scene wow. in that show where somebody had come in, he had been fucking a raccoon in Central Park or something. And everybody had <laughs> Raccoon shocked, in Central Park. Something like that. Something preposterous. And Barney says to Wojo, who's nonplussed by it, Wojo's the dongo. And he, it doesn't really phase him that this is happening. He said, Barney, I've been in New York long enough. No matter what it is, somebody's trying to sleep with it. <laughs> Which was television for fun. Yeah. And that's what it's like nowadays. Whoop, you're, 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 do, uh, you're back, you're going. I'm back, I'm here, I'm there, I'm There's everywhere. A young woman hanging out. With you. Yes, yes. Hi, Our next are. guest oh. is, uh, is with oh. us. The uh, fantastic uh, Peach Fuzz. She is going to be oh, with us hello. here in just a few moments. Uh, Richard, you, okay. you, you, if you don't have anywhere to go, you can hang out. If no, you want to hang out with, with me and Peach Fuzz here. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would love for you to stay. <laughs> it won't be too long. <laughs> you wait a co- maybe a couple of months. You know. <laughs> I'm old. I'm feeble. <laughs> I, have, I have colon problems. Oi, oi. Oy. Oy vey. <laughs> I had an orgasm in 1987, I think. Was, the, last, the last one. Every year I remember it. It was on July 17th, 1987. Boy, was she good. <laughs> oh. That is that was awesome. Enough. After that, I don't need another one. That was good enough. The last one. I'm going to write a book called The Last One. Uh, <laughs> I'll be quiet. I know this is that is amazing. Uh, that is amazing. <laughs> so Richard holds the title of Playgirl Man of the Year for the year also, that I was born smallest, in 1979. The smallest cock to ever hit the big time. I love it. I just I love the fact that you were the Playgirl Man of the Year in the year that oh. I was born. 
Oh, that's great. That is amazing to me. <laughs> it was a good year. It was a good year. That's right. Now I'm the good year blimp. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, the magic we, peepee. We have, uh, speaking of the magic peepee, uh, we. <laughs> We have our next guest with us today. She is fantastic. She is, you know, I, I, I don't even know. I don't even have enough words in the English language to, to, to describe Peach Fuzz. But uh, she...